In this short tutorial, I will quickly cover the config tab of the Dream Factory admin console. So the config tab is pretty straightforward. I'm going to cover the key concepts and point everyone to the documentation for more details. So along the side here, you've got a couple of different options. You can click on any of them. The first thing is system info. So we show the version number here. There are two things. There's the actual admin application, which is this front end uh, web app. And here we're on version 2.0.6. And then there's the version of the runtime, the actual uh, software that you get on GitHub or Bitnami or whatever, uh, you, wherever you got it from. That will show the version number of that as well. So it's a quick way to see where you are. And when you upgrade, of course, that will change to the, the newest version. Uh, another thing is cache. So this is important. Uh, if you ever are trying to troubleshoot, for example, if you add a new service, say a SQL database, and... Uh, things don't show up, like tables don't show up, or you're seeing any odd behavior, sometimes you need to flush the system-wide cache, and that will rebuild all of the API docs, and everything should be in working order. So this is a good way when you're adding anything, uh, you may need to flush the cache from time to time. So that's how you do that. Just click on this button, and when you do that, you'll get a confirmation that it worked. Next thing is cores. So cores is really the use case there is any time that you need to add a server, another server, say you're building a web application and you want to host that web application on your own server somewhere, not in the same server where Dream Factory is running or not inside the Dream Factory file system, you need to whitelist that particular server IP address. And you may need to put other things like paths and headers and you can set uh, the amount of time that you want for that to be a valid whitelisted IP. Now, you can comma delimit as many IP addresses as you want, and a useful thing for development purposes is to just put in a star in the origin, like that, for development, and that will open up the API endpoints. For example, if you're developing on your local IP address on your own Mac or Windows or Linux machine, you can, uh, put star in here and then access the API endpoints in Dream Factory by doing that. Never, never do that in production, obviously. It's a security risk. You need to whitelist your IP addresses for any production implementations. The next thing is email templates. So Dream Factory comes with a bunch of built-in or several built-in email templates. There's user invites, user registration, password reset. So this is for self-registration use cases. If your application is registering users in your own UI and you wanna have a way that they can confirm uh, via email that they're signing up and set their email address and password. You can do that. So there are a bunch of helper email templates here. Won't go too much into the details, uh, and I'll, but I will point folks to the documentation at the end of this tutorial. Uh, so this is really helpful just for those use cases. And then you can add as many email templates as you want. So if you have other email driven use cases and you're using the email API, you can obviously add additional email templates uh, any way you want. The next thing is global lookup keys. So we talked a little bit about lookup keys and users and roles. This is a way of adding permission. So if you have a database that's on premises, for example, in your data center and you have existing permissions uh, in that database. So you have role lookup keys, for example, that govern access to tables and even to specific records. Uh, for example, some field that defines permissions. You can put those lookup keys here and Dream Factory can handle these lookup keys once users are authenticated. So you can have lookup keys that are global, you can have lookup keys that are at the role level, and you can have lookup keys that are at the user level. And Dream Factory deals with the precedent of those different levels of lookup keys. Uh, and there's much more documentation on that, but that's the basic idea behind lookup keys. And then lastly, preferences. So this is where you can set up the behavior of the actual user interface. So how uh, the UI behaves, do you wanna auto close pages, uh, that kind of thing. It's, it's good to play with this and see how you like it. You can change uh, some of the behavior and it's pretty flexible and some people do have preferences there. So if you don't like the defaults for how the UI is behaving, then go ahead and look there and uh, play with it and you'll see some, hopefully some advantage there to the way that you like it to work. So that's it uh, almost. I do wanna point everyone to more details because that's just a very quick primer on things. So if you go into uh, tutorials, so Dream Factory, wiki.dreamfactory.com slash dreamfactory slash tutorials. You can get this from the homepage here. So if you go to tutorials here, 
and then scroll to the bottom to configuration settings. And this explains some more details around clearing the system cache, enabling cores access, how to actually do it with some examples, setting up your email templates and how all that works, and then also setting up lookup keys. So click on any of those and you'll have a lot more detail. So hopefully that's helpful. We have a bunch of other tutorials on our Dream Factory channel on YouTube. Check out wiki.dreamfactory.com for more details. And if you have questions, then you can also go to community.dreamfactory.com to our developer forum, and you'll find a lot more information and Q&A there as well. Hope this helps, and thanks.